Hi, I'm Roseanne and welcome to my garden. Today is May 7th in Minneapolis, Minnesota and the garden is just coming alive. Now a couple of plants have finished blooming. Uh, others are just peaking now such as the beautiful tulips in front of me. Most of the plants however are just beginning to leaf out. It's really an exciting time in the garden full of anticipation. I'd love to take you on a tour of my garden today and show you some of the favorite things that I see happening. Then, in a week or so, I'll do another garden tour, which will appear on the last half of this video, and show you a whole new cast of characters showing off their blooms, notably the crab apple trees and the peonies. Let's begin our tour with the tulips. After a long white winter, it's always so exciting to look forward to a tulip display. Last fall, my husband and I planted 200 bulbs. We do that about every three years because we find that after the first year of blooming, uh, the tulips might flower for another year or two, but that's it. Rather than planting in rows, I prefer planting in colorful clusters of 10 to 15 bulbs. I like to vary the height, the shape of the bloom, and the color. I think this creates an, an informal, casual feel uh, as you walk up the front walk. I do plant the tulips in between hosta and some other perennials. I think this creates a nice green backdrop for the colorful tulips, and it creates a sense of, of fullness or abundance to the front walk. When the tulips are done blooming, you can remove the stems, but be sure to leave the leaves intact until they turn brown. This allows the tulip to store energy in the bulb for the following year. I have found tulips to be quite hardy as a spring plant. As long as the blooms aren't out yet, they can withstand some pretty tough spring conditions. Here's a picture that was taken a little over three weeks ago on Easter Sunday. Some of the tulip leaves were already six inches tall and you can see how covered with snow they are. Obviously they recovered just fine. When my husband and I planted the tulips last fall, we used an auger and a one half inch power drill. This made the work a lot easier. The tulips may be the most colorful and showy of the spring flowering plants in my garden, but there are many more springtime garden treats I'd like to show you. The Irish moss, or Sagina subulata, growing in the cracks of the path, stays greenish all winter, but really starts getting bright green with new growth this time of year. Peeking behind the tulips is Vinca. Vinca is a hardy ground cover with sweet bluish purple flowers and deep green glossy leaves. I consider ground covers an important part of garden layering and Vinca is an important ground cover for me. I've had several other large patches uh, growing in the garden. It seems to do best in sunny to partial shade conditions. Another favorite early spring flowering plant of mine is creeping phlox. This started from a few little plants, uh, I don't know, five, ten years ago, and it's totally filled in and, and mounded. It's just so lovely. It's especially good in rock gardens or places where it can cascade down um, inclines. So at any rate, it works great here and uh, we just love it. Moving to the backyard, I'd like to show you another tulip. This is a species tulip. Unlike the large tulips out front, this group of bulbs has been coming back every spring for 15 years. I'm not sure why I don't have more of these as species tulips can be found online in all sorts of colors. They are very beautiful. It wouldn't be a spring tour if I didn't point out the adorable red cones at the tips of these Acrocona spruce trees. I have three trees planted together which give the appearance of one big shaggy tree. I find the red cones and the loose lumpy shape of this variety irresistible. 
I just love this native bleeding heart plant. It is so gorgeous with its graceful arching branches and the beautiful heart-shaped flowers that look like they're bleeding. It's a, it's a wonderful addition to a woodland garden. It likes partial shade, but can handle uh, a variety of conditions. Next, I'd like to take you to the back corner of our yard, which is where we have our woodland garden. Notice the lovely white flowering tree on the left. It's a serviceberry tree, one of my favorites because the birds love the berries and I love the delicate branching habit and blossoms. My husband recently added stepping stones through the woodland garden. It not only looks good, it is extremely practical. We're very excited about enlarging our collection of native plants that thrive in shady, moist, rich soil. Here I am in our woodland garden, home to Jack in the Pulpit, Salomon Seal, Bloodroot, Trillium, and others. Right now, the Trillium are the star. I just love Trillium for their beautiful, bright petals. Now, they do come in other colors. I happen to prefer the white. Behind the Trillium are the unusual, thick, leathery leaves of the Bloodroot plant. Here's a picture of the Bloodroot taken two weeks ago. It was the first flowering plant of spring in our garden. Jack in the Pulpit is another reliable repeat performer year after year. I love its unusual structure or morphology. Its common name is rather understandable. If you look carefully, can you see Jack in the Pulpit? It propagates naturally quite well, although most of my attempts to naturalize it elsewhere in the garden have only been moderately successful. Lastly, Solomon's seal is just leafing out with graceful arching stems. All in all, I hope you'll agree, it's a very sweet woodland garden. A week has passed and the crabapple blossoms are in full display. We have seven crabapple trees in our yard, but my favorite has to be Louisa behind me. I hope you'll agree that Louisa is a true beauty. Not only is she graceful with her weeping branches and delicate blossoms, she provides great habitat and food for the birds. Even when the crabapples are full grown, they are very small. Too small for us to eat, but perfect for the critters. Beneath the crab apple tree, and in beautiful contrast to the pink blossoms, is a blue procumbens spruce. Its sprawling habit and bright blue needles gives it year-round interest. In the back of the yard, in the woodland garden, is our spring snow crab apple tree. It has gorgeous white blossoms. For a few days every year, it rains white petals, which is reminiscent of a spring snow. Another cute little tree is our royal gem crab apple tree. Almost perfectly spherical in shape, it has beautiful dark foliage and brilliant deep pink blossoms. I had hoped to show you the peonies, but they're being a bit stubborn this spring. Maybe another time. Next, let's take a look at the side yard. Greeting us at the entrance is our Lancelot crab apple. Taking the stepping stone path toward the back is our espaliered apple trees. They are looking strong and healthy and the blossoms are gorgeous. Hopefully, we'll have good apples this year. Thanks for joining me on this spring garden tour. I hope it gets you excited about summer gardening and all of the wonderful things yet to happen. Also, think about planting tulips or flowering shrubs or trees to give you beauty in the spring garden. Till next time.